Africa, there's a piece of legislation that is called the Broad-Based Black Economic Empowerment. This legislation is designed purely for black people to try and correct the ills of the past. I, as an entrepreneur, in 2009, when I decided that I'm going to leave formal employment, I was hearing government talk about you need to be black, you need to be young, you need to be a woman to access all these opportunities that are in South Africa. As a born entrepreneur, I said, hang on, I'm black, tick. I'm young, tick. I'm a woman, tick. I'm beautiful and I'm hot, double tick. <laughs> and I started doing research on what it really means to, to us, this triple B E act. Because in South Africa, there's a stereotype about tendering and B E. You need to be this black man with this big butt, uh, you know, belly, belly. And you need to wear certain type of shoes to show that you are a tenderpreneur. But hang on, there's more to this Triple B Act. I found out that at the time there were seven elements to it. And the first one is ownership. And what meant was that white-owned entities in South Africa were looking for black entrepreneurs or black business people for transformation to take place. And instead of me complaining that we're not getting opportunities, for me it was, wow, this is how we correct the ills of the past. Because they're not just looking for me as a black young woman. They're looking for me as a black young woman with masters in entrepreneurship. They're looking for me as a black young woman who is qualified, chartered accountant, or a scientist, or a business person. So they're looking for me, for the brains that we have, and the knowledge and the skills that we have. Not purely because of the gender and the color of our skin. They're looking for more. And for me, that's what Triple B E Act meant. And for us, when we started the Young Women in Business Network, it meant that it's a stepping stone to get and participate in the economy of our country. But what it really meant is that it is time that black South Africans start participating in the economy of South Africa. And not just imposing ourselves in white-owned entities that we know nothing about, that we didn't even create and don't even understand the culture of that company. But it, what it meant is that it gives us a stepping stone that we can then start creating our own legacies, that one day my great-grandchildren will be able to say, this generation of black people, this is what they have done. In 2014, I was then introduced to the concept of cooperative banking. Let me track back. In 2011, when I was doing research, I found out that stock fells make 44 billion in South Africa. Please hear me. I'm not talking about 4 million, no, I'm not talking about 40 million. I'm not talking about 4 billion or 14 billion. I'm talking about 40 billion that for years we've been told stock falls are in formal sector that is not recognized in this country. This is something that as black people we're told that we can't save, that we don't understand the culture of money and can't respect money. But yet we are able to save short-term savings that accumulates to 44 billion per annum. Hear me out. We're not talking about plastic money, that is credit card, that when people call, we don't answer our calls because we now we need to pay back. <laughs> I'm talking about money that is disposable cash, the money that extends hands through black people in this country. But yet, for us, this is not business. For us, this is a way of life. The stock force is a social thing that people come at the end of the month and then we save money and then come the end of the year, between 15 December and 23rd of December, we spend 40 billion of that buying groceries. And this is something that we don't understand. Because for us, it's a way of life. For us, it's not business. For us, it's not us participating in the economy of the country. Remember I said we track back? Let's fast forward. 2014, I'm introduced to the concept of cooperative banking. 
And when I listen about cooperative banking, I understand that, hang on, wait a minute. Cooperative banking is stock files. And this stock files is something that is now termed the Cooperative Banks Act. Because what it really means is that our financial sector, when I say our, I said the South African financial sector is one of the best in the world, but the black South Africans are not participating in that. Yet in 2015, 2016, the stock falls make 50 billion rand. This is the sector that is growing and still it's termed informal sector. And when I listened, I said, but this is stock fall. This is something that we understand. This is something that my great grandmother did. This is something that my grandmother did. This is something that my parents still do even today. And when we started, we started doing research about what we can do to use the Cooperative Banking Act for us to participate in the banking sector. Because we believe that the current banks are not conducive to the black entrepreneurs. They are totally not. Our banks are not designed for entrepreneurship. Our banks are not designed for tenderpreneurship because tenderpreneurship or entrepreneurship is about purchase orders and tenders. And we find people running around with our purchase orders and tenders, not being able to do the job because they can't get funding. It's not that they are incapable. It's because they don't have the money to do this. So when we decided as a young woman in business network that we are going to talk to our members that we are going to save money every month because that's what a stock fell does. But instead of us spending 40 billion in a week to buy groceries, we're going to channel that money into enterprise funding. Because it is time that when we say we are entrepreneurs and real entrepreneurs, we need to put our own money into ensuring that our own businesses succeed without expecting somebody else to do that for us. And when we started in 2014, with the requirement being you need a minimum of 200 people, you need 100,000 rand of share capital, and we said, but that's 500 rand per person. When are we gonna get to us funding 500,000 rand of a purchase order, or, or a million rand of that purchase order? So we are going to put ours at two million rand. It means that those minimum 200 people are each going to pay 10,000 rand into share capital and we were able to raise over two million rand in less than eight months, something that has never been done in this country. And over and above that, we save a thousand rand every month for a period of five years, purely for enterprise funding. And today, I'm happy to say that we have over, we started saving in March 2016 a thousand rand. Now I'm talking to you, we have over 380 people. As a collective, we have over six million rand. Half of that, we've already funded our enterprises, a minimum of 330, a maximum of 350,000 rand for their enterprises. Because what that means is, finally, we get to invest in our own businesses and take ourselves seriously. And through that, it will then be an answer to job creation in our country. And it is through cooperation, not because of race or gender, it is time that we come together and start working together to create jobs in South Africa. And it is through that that we believe as a collaboration, us working together will be able to reduce the 27% unemployment rate in this country, will be able to reduce that the 1,000 days of entrepreneurs they fail before they can even do anything. So as the Young Women in Business Network, when you're talking about banking, it starts with us saying we need to participate in the financial sector of our country. And secondly, it says it is this generation, us in the room, that will be able to change that. Because this is 22 years into the democracy, and it is us that have our economy in our own hands. And as we're going forward and looking to participate in starting a commercial bank, we need to be able to take that into consideration and then say banking, it's a start. And when we start with banking, then we can move into insurance because when you have the number of people and the financial backing of that, then we'll be able to take back our country into our own hands 
and we'll be able to take back what is due to us. And then we can invest into your insurance, into education, because then we'll have the pride and the values that we put into that, into ensuring that South Africa becomes the world that we all want to live in, not as an individual, but as a collective. Thank you.